All right, just to review, I got the cadmium yellow deep, or I am using azo yellow, burnt sienna, um, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, uh, the olive green, and uh, raw sienna. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start again with the background. I'm going to work to the foreground, but I'm going to work wet on dry paper. And one of the things I'm always telling you, you people, is that you want to work your colors very intense because you'll never get them more intense as you move through the painting. You have to put down that intensity first. So once you start uh, painting, it really it's important to get your colors fairly intense at the beginning. So you're always working your colors more intense at the beginning and grain things down as you move along. Now, the sky in this was overcast that day, but I'm gonna add a, a little bit more blue and I'm gonna be very casual about it, bringing it down into the trees because the sky has the influence on everything around it. And you don't have to keep the sky flat or just blue. I have yellow in there and I have green up in there. Forgive me, why did your um, blue land so nicely right there? <laughs> did you <laughs> do something <laughs> magical? No, no. I've had this on a slant yeah. and it, it's going to run. Uh, if I'm working a bigger piece, I'm always working more flat if I'm working real wet so it doesn't fall. But sometimes the watercolor, the, the, the beauty of the watercolor is that um, allowing things to mingle or mix on the paper and not over mixing your paint here does all sorts of magical things up here. You don't have control over it to a certain extent, but you end up with, with things that are a little bit different. And you can't get this in any other media. You can't get it in oil paints. You, you can get it in acrylics if you're painting like watercolors but most people don't paint acrylics like watercolors. So I want a little bit of the sky to be dramatic. It's gonna diffuse a little bit. And I'm gonna come down, and I'm not worried about dripping here or there, because I do want, especially some of this plant life, to have that blue in it, because like I said, the sky does influence a lot of things. So I'm gonna come down to the lower part here, and I'm gonna start putting in really heavy color. Every three or four brush strokes, I'm going to be changing color or whatever the case may be, or intensities or value or temperature. But use a lot of color at the beginning, especially in something like this. This is really why I chose this as a paint along because it has all this great color in it Well, you're going to have to put a lot of color in here at the beginning. And I'm also going to wash the road in very quickly. And I'm trying to incorporate the color into the road because that will influence it. I'm really inventing some colors here because that's what I do. I don't try to copy the photograph. but I'm trying to keep everything on the looser side. And I did paint around the house on purpose. But look at the color of the way it mixes with the sky. Now what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to block in very lightly the house. And that's your first wash, very quickly. Huh. But work your colors intense. I can't tell you enough to keep your colors more intense at the beginning because at this point you'll never get them too much more intense than what it is unless you're laying the same color on top of the same color. You can maybe get more intense. But at this particular point, I have the basis. Everything is blocked in. I've gotten rid of most of the white of the paper because getting rid of the white of the paper at the beginning will create a stronger relationship of the colors. 
Otherwise, if you leave white in the paper, white is cool and it's going to throw everything else off. Right. In fact, let me douse this a little bit. So that's what I want you to do in the first wash. Okie dokie. Okay. <laughs> sure. Just as simple as that. Sure, so I'll just go for it. <laughs> we'll go around. have to over mix your colors remember. Keep your sky light and down because it's overcast it's like looking through a uh, frosted window it throws the light everywhere and shadows become softer as opposed to a bright day where shadows are more distinct. And don't worry about getting the bloom of the trees because that's going to help them. So the burnt sand is now in the foreground. Real bright, very intense, right out of the tube. You can always gray it down afterwards. Don't be afraid of the color. We're doing down here? Yeah. No, it changed the color every three or four brush strokes. You can add greens in there and pure burnt sienna. Don't it's a technical term in water. Look at your dimple down. It's a dimple down. You don't have a brush, leave the flow. So when you're putting things down here. Put a light wash across the house after you're done with it.
soft. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs>